Hello everyone and welcome. It's Tech Tuesday. It's me, the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios. And I know it's been a while. Y'all probably missed me on these technical videos because some of y'all really like my security onion ones that I did. Some of y'all really like my parrot ones that I did. But today we're going to do something a little different. Well, not really. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to basics. And since Kali Purple came out, I figure why not give it a shot. But this week, what we're going to do is we are going to install it from ISO. But I'm going to show you a few things. First and foremost, how to make a USB drive if you're going to install this on bare metal. Because that's what you'll have to do is make a USB drive out of it. So... That'll be the first thing we do. And then we'll get into, I'm actually going to install it into a virtual machine from the ISO and we'll go through the process. Now, without further ado, let's get things started. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is I have Belina Etcher here. And actually, before we get into Belina Etcher, let me show you where you can grab uh, Kali from. If you don't already know, Kali.org, get Kali. There is a Kali Purple, a dedicated image to the Purple Team edition of Kali. I've already downloaded it. We've already ready to rock and roll. So that's what we're going to use. Now, let's go into Belina Etcher. In order to do this, we have to flash from file. I don't have a clone drive. I'm not going to put the URL in. I already have the file downloaded. So that's what we're going to go with. So we go to flash from file. We pick our ISO here and we hit open. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick our target. So if we want to select our target, I have a bunch of external drives. We're going to use this uh, USB drive that I have, it's an 8 gig drive, it'll work great. So we're gonna select that one. And then all you do is you hit flash. Once you hit flash, this will start, this will go through the process and it just blacked out on me because, you know, it wants to, me to give it permission to run some command line tools. But this will go through the process, it'll flash the drive and we'll be good to go. So uh, I'm gonna let this run. Once this is done, I'll show you that it's done. Uh, and then we'll get into actually installing it in the VMware, if that's what you want to use. Uh, and this process will work for VMware uh, and just about anything else once we get past setting up the ISO image in there. So give me a second and we'll be right back. All right, so now that that Belina Etcher is done, so that flash drive is ready to go. If there's any issues, you can always reflash it. Um, sometimes there are problems. It just doesn't wipe and flash correctly. Don't worry about it. Just do a new flash. Although, before you do that, check your system because um, I have not done a bare metal boot with this. This is my first time looking at it. So some of your systems will have issues with secure boot and UEFI and everything else. Make sure you're operating correctly. Uh, if, it, if it is bootable and it doesn't boot from the drive, make sure you remove secure boot. If that doesn't work, change it from UEFI to classic boot. Um, so that it'll just boot up and you'll be able to install it now Saying that let's get into this. All right, let's actually do the real work and show you the install So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do file new virtual machine and I'm running workstation pro 16 All right, so if you're running uh, virtual box or VM workstation player or whatever the case may be We can make it happen, but this generally speaking you do a typical and we're gonna select our image. So I'm not doing Ubuntu right now. We're actually gonna go into our Kali Purple ISO. We're gonna say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna go next. No, this is not Ubuntu. Uh, I don't think it has anything else. So ah, we'll go with it. Since it's built on Debian, we can usually get away with using Ubuntu 64 as the version. And I'm not seeing Debian in here. I am, but I don't know. I'd have to look up which Debian version this is. And since Kali still is not built into this, we'll stick with Ubuntu. Um, I don't know, and again, for anybody who does know this, choosing this version, please, in the comments, I've not done my research on this version in particular. Ubuntu 64 or Debian has always worked for me. Um, actually, let's switch it to Debian just because I know that's what their back end is. So we'll de do Debian 10 64 bit. Um, please let me know what selecting the version here actually does for you because offhand, I do not know. Uh, I haven't done my research, it just works. Um, but we'll use Debian Linux and we'll go next. Virtual machine name, we're gonna call this Kali Purple 2023 and next. So this size, you can set this to whatever you want. I'm gonna end up uh, making this 80 gigs solely because I don't know if we're gonna add any other tools down the line. I don't intend to, but we may. Uh, and then I'm gonna store it all on a single file. 
because I'm not, um, I have no reason to make multiple split discs. Okay. Um, I'm not going to move it to another machine. Uh, and honestly, making it one just works for me. You have the choice though. It's completely up to you. All right. So we're going to use uh, network adapter is NAT. So it's going to be um, dynamically translated. So the internet and everything will work. We don't have any issues. Memory. Um, you know what? I'm going to update our customize this. We're going to change our processors to two. And the cores anyways. And we're going to set our memory to four gigs. And that should be fine. USB is present. Printer. Okay. And we're going to close. So that should work for us. And we're going to finish. So what that'll do is that creates the whole new virtual machine for us. And it's going to utilize that ISO. So when we power it on, it's going to go through the standard process of powering on a VMware machine. Install as you would. You have a few options. We can either start this up. Um without anything or we can actually do the install directly we're going to actually do a direct install so we'll do the graphical install just for fun um makes it a little bit easier on us all right so english is of course what i'm speaking so we're going to go with an english language we're going to say i'm in the united states keyboard to use american english and then it's going to detect and mount the installation media it's going to scan it all which is just the iso file that we chose to use and then, of course, anything additional that it needs to load. All right. So what it wants us to do is enter a host name for this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it Kali Cyber Warrior Studios. And then we're going to continue. And then a domain name. I don't have a domain name. All right. We're not, so it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to put CyberWarriorStudios.com. And then we're going to continue. You know, configure full name for a new user. So this is the user account that you're going to use um, if this is a daily driver or even generally logging in. Since Kali changed, I believe it was last year, in the beginning of last year, maybe uh, in 2021, I can't remember exactly. They switched over and got away from using root all the time, uh, which for anybody who's been using Kali long enough knows the original login was root and Tor. Now you actually create a user when you do this ISO image that you will utilize uh, for your day-to-day -day activities as opposed to the root user. So the full name, we're just gonna call it Cyber Warrior. And we're gonna continue, username for the account. We're gonna say Cyber Warrior with no spaces. And then we enter our password. Once the time zone, so we'll just hit continue. You would select the time zone that you're in, no big deal. Then it's gonna detect disk. If you are installing on bare metal, and you have multiple operating systems. This is when it'll get tricky because this is when you get down to partitioning and things of that nature. Um, because this is a virtual machine for us, this is actually gonna be pretty easy. Now, I'm not gonna go through the process of setting up LVM or encrypted LVM. This is just a virtual machine. I'm not really concerned. Um, honestly, I don't even know how often I'm gonna use it, but I did wanna like test it out and test run it for you guys. So. Um, we're going to do guided using the entire disk and we only have one. It's an 80 gig. So we're going to hit continue all files in one partition, separate home partitions, home bar and temp partitions. We're just going to do all files in one. This just makes it easier for me to show how this is done. If you do have questions about the different partitions, the reason why you would do a separate home partition or anything of, the, of that nature, please feel free to do some research. Um, if you have questions, put it in the comments. Feel free to let me know. I will answer the best that I can. Um, however, doing it this way for a virtual machine is honestly just the easiest way to do it. If you're not using it as a daily driver, there is absolutely little to no reason to have a bunch of different partitions and encryption um, unless you're doing things that you want encrypted. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit continue. And we want to write changes to the disk. Yes, we do. We're going to hit continue. So what this is going to do is going to go through partition the disk for us and then go through and install the base operating system. Um, once it's done with that, it'll continue on with all packages, package installations, things of that nature. And because we're online, um, even though this is an offline install, uh, normally, and again, this is my first time using Kali Purple, it'll actually try to grab updates. 
So we will see what happens here in a second once this is done to see if it actually attempts to do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will do that when we first log in. That way, next week, we are set to go for whenever we start looking at the different tools. All right, so right now it's configuring APT, and then it's going to install all the software that it was uh, intended to for the base uh, install. So you can choose your desktop environment. Me personally, I usually use KDE Plasma, especially if I'm going to be using this on bare metal because then it can utilize my entire graphics card and it's not a big deal. But for this purpose of this install, we're going to install everything it says here. So all the defensive tools. And we're going to install XFCE, uh, Kali's default desktop environment. We're not going to use GNOME or KDE Plasma on this. These other tools that it has here, Identity, Protect, Detect, Respond, and Recover, we'll look into those as the, the weeks go on at the different tooling that it installs. So while it's installing this, I'll be back in a minute. All right, so it installed the software. We're going to go through, install the Grub Bootloader. For anyone who doesn't know that's new to Linux, maybe this is your first time taking a look at it or any variation of Linux. Grub is the bootloader. So instead of it being the UEFI or the Windows bootloader, um, Linux uses Grub. I've done videos on this with my um, Linux Basics for Hackers book. Talked about the Grub a little bit, so we're gonna do it here. Installing the Grub bootloader to your primary drive. Yes, we only have one drive, so that's what we're gonna use. And we're just gonna do slash dev SDA, and this is gonna install Grub. Again, you want a little bit more in-depth explanation of what Grub is, go back, watch Linux Basics, Basics for Hackers. I have a whole playlist on that as well. So that'll get you some Linux basics heading into your experience with Kali Linux and anything else. Um, and actually in that video, I did another Kali install because that's what we ended up using for that book. Thanks to Occupy the Web, that is what he ended up uh, using. So we're gonna go through, it's gonna finish the installation. As soon as this is done, uh, I believe it'll do a reboot. So I'll let you know and we'll be right back. All right, the bootloader is installed. Installation is complete. So the next thing we do is, of course, reboot. So we're going to finish. It's going to reboot. And we'll get into our system. And we'll take it like a Kali Purple for the very first time. So thankfully, this is quick. We're just going to go ahead, Kali Linux. And I could give you a whole background on Kali and why it says GNU Linux. But that's not the point of this video. So we're not going to do it. So let's go ahead and let it boot. And honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, those errors and the, the different things that you see, I have not um, looked up what they are. So if you know what they are, just by pausing the screen and look, please feel free to let me know and how to fix them because I get them all the time. So we're going to log in for the very first time and we are done. Actually, not technically. So we're going to say I finished installing here. Probably want to install. Um, the next thing you would want to install is VMware Tools. So if I go to VM, and this is so we can actually finish everything. Where is it? I can usually install VMware tools, but I'm not seeing it. All right, that's fine. Deal with it later. Uh, we'll probably go through that next video, to be honest, because I got to look up if I got to uh, install open VM tools. Um, and again, if you're watching this and you know whether or not I can install VMware tools, um, the actual VMware version, please let me know. Otherwise, next video we'll do open VM tools. Um, but the first thing you want to do is sudo apt get update uh, invalid operation. Oh, that's why. sudo apt update. I'm so used to running the older commands. So that's done. So then when you do sudo apt upgrade. And already, so I just got this ISO yesterday. Already there's 253 megs of archives, 140 applications that need updated. So just be aware, when you first install these systems, it is a very, very good idea to have your original install and then updated installs. So for me personally, what I'm gonna do before I upgrade this, we're gonna say no. I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna go to VM. I'm going to go to snapshots. This is if you have this ability, if you have VM Workstation Pro or VirtualBox, always take a snapshot and you put in here initial install or whatever you want to call it. And you take that snapshot. So you can see in the very bottom of the screen, it is saving the state. So we're going to let that state save. All right. Once that is done, 
we'll do APT upgrade and we will allow it to upgrade all of our software. But you don't need to be here for that. You already know what goes on. Otherwise, look, hey, this is just the installation. Over the next few weeks, I will go through, evaluate some of the tools with you, see what they do and don't do. And I will do my research beforehand to get an understanding and a better understanding of what tools they're using. Otherwise, this has been Tech Tuesday. And I know it's been a while. It's been a long time. But I am the Cyber Warrior. And I truly hope you get something from this. If you have not installed from ISO a Linux variation before in a virtual machine, um, I hope you learned something from here. And again, a lot of these same steps work on bare metal. You just have to decide, uh, you know, partition size and things like that. Uh, if it is your only operating system, you can overwrite everything and just install it as your operating system like we did here today. Otherwise, you will have to figure out your partitioning, uh, what operating system is your primary, things of that nature. Uh, and then Linux, you will boot from Grub and be able to do those things. So hopefully between creating the USB and installing either to bare metal or to virtual machine, you got something from this. Otherwise, look, it's been an amazing Tech Tuesday. I'll be back tomorrow with Walk With Me, Friday for Security Happy Hour. And you know, I'm always coming out with motivational videos, so we'll be dropping those also. So y'all take care. You have a good one. And all my warriors out there, you keep on fighting. You don't quit. You never give up. And we'll keep at it. Y'all take care.